good morning. Thanks for being here this morning. If you weren't here last week, I just wanted to recap really quickly. We had a decision day where five people um, came forward and were baptized, accepted Christ uh, for the first time. So uh, that's something to be uh, excited about. And if you were here last week, it was a great week. And if you weren't, uh, you missed it. Um, But I just wanted to let you know um, about that. Um, As Troy uh, said this morning, we are starting a brand new series um, called Storms of Life. Now, there's all kinds of natural storms that occur out there. You know, there's hurricanes and tornadoes and like the earthquake in Taiwan uh, that happened yesterday, if you were watching the news about that, a tragedy um, over there. But that's not the kind of storms that we're going to be talking about. The kind of storms we're going to be talking about, they're very similar, though, similar to the the earthquake that happened yesterday. It shook the ground and kind of destroyed and toppled buildings, a lot of times the things that we can go through in our life, the storms that we come, maybe it's an illness, it's a family situation, it's a a job situation, a financial situation, all kinds of different storms that come at us, they can shake us to our very foundations. They can cause us to have all kinds of anxiety and worry. Those are the kinds of storms that we're going to be talking about uh, over the next uh, few weeks. So kind of to, um, first of all, anybody ever been in one of those kind of storms? Yeah, Um, my understanding from my life and as I observe the human condition, I I find that you either have just come out of a storm, you are currently in a storm, or guess what? A storm is coming, all right? That's just kind of how it is. That's how our life seems to go. Either we're just coming out of one, we're right square in the middle of one, or if things seem to be going good, it just seems like, you know, look out, because here it's coming. That's the kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about. Now, To kind of prepare us for our topic today, let me ask you a question. Turn to your neighbor and answer this question. What do you think the most common command in the whole Bible is? What do you think it is? The most common command. You think it's maybe love, you know, to love people? That would seem to be a big one. Or maybe to serve people, you know. Jesus seemed big on that kind of thing. All right? Loving and serving, those are good. Anybody say one of those? Those are good, but wrong, but wrong. All right? The most common command in the whole Bible is this. Fear not. Fear not. Don't be afraid. Don't worry. Don't be anxious. Over and over and over and over again throughout the Bible, God tells his people not to be afraid, not to be worried, not to be anxious. <laughs> That's not how we live, is it? I mean, how many of you know somebody who's a worry wart? All right? Don't point. That's rude. Okay? But you know people who just worry about every single thing. But if we're honest, most of us worry about some things. Maybe not every single thing, but there are things that cause us worry and fear and anxiety, and we let that build up among us. We live in a society of fear, maybe the most fearful society of, uh, that's ever uh, lived. It seemed to be all around us. I, some time ago, I asked my wife, Rhonda, who's a counselor, as some of you know, because um, I thought maybe she could give us some insight you know, into the human condition. You know, I said, what, did, what are people afraid of? And she said, everything. <laughs> and that wasn't really the insight I was looking for, but it's actually true, right? She said, you can't think of anything that someone's not afraid of. We're just fearful all the time. We live in a society of fear. I mean, it starts before this, but certainly as teenagers, young adults, we're fearful that, you know, we're not going to fit in, that people are going to reject us. For a lot of us, we never really get past that. We kind of stay there. It happens in our relationships, right? We're afraid that we're never going to find somebody. And then if we do find somebody, we're afraid it's not going to last, it's not going to work out. So we've got all kinds of fears. We're fearful of our jobs, either that we're not going to ever get our dream job or that we're going to be stuck in a dead-end job or we're never going to get a job, and we just we have fears about our jobs. We have financial fears. You know, we look at the news and we watch them and see the stock market go up and down. It just it causes us fear. We're fearful about our health, right? Even though statistically over the last, you know, 100 years, we, we live longer as Americans than, than we ever have. We're healthier than we've ever been. We can cure all kinds of diseases. Even though statistically we're the most healthy people that have ever lived, we're also the most worried about our health. We're just a worried people. Maybe you had a birthday and you just turned 30 or 40 or 50 and you start to have worries that your life is not really going to amount to what you had hoped for, that you're not going to to reach your your hopes and dreams. And then we think about the end of our life and we think, I'm going to die alone and in pain. Or, or on the other hand, we're afraid that we're going to die young, you know, and not get to experience the things that we want to. And then we turn on the television and we hear about terrorism and all that stuff. And it, it seems like, as one person said, if you're not afraid, it's just because you're not paying attention, right? There's stuff out there. It seems like everything from everywhere is screaming at us 
be afraid. Be very afraid. How about it? Anybody have any of those fears, those anxieties this morning? Any of those ring true? Did I push all the right buttons? <laughs> did, I, did, I, did I hit those? Did I leave anything out? The reality is fear is all around us. But the good news is, and this is what I want us to know this morning is, there is an antidote to fear. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to live in anxiety. It's, it's an antidote that can be applied today, immediately in your life, and it can change your life beginning today. And so that's good news. And before we get to that, I want to kind of talk about this idea of fear just a little bit, because I want us to understand that there's at least two kinds of fear, all right? There's good fear and bad fear. It's profound, right? You're going to get a lot of profound things today. There's one of them, good fear and bad fear. The Bible talks about good fear as being the fear of the Lord, fear of God. It says that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, right? The fear of God, good fear, um, other kinds of good fear is like, you know, it's what keeps us from doing dumb things. It keeps little kids from touching hot stoves, you know, things like that. That's good fear. But the best good fear is the fear of God, the reverence of God, the awe and the, the fearful reverence, the understanding of who he is. And I think that if we would fear God, we wouldn't fear anything else. But if we don't fear God, then we are open to fear everything else. So there's good fear, the fear of God, but then there's bad fear. You you understand bad fear, right? Bad fear gets in your brain and it plays with your imagination, right? It asks all kinds of questions like, well, what if this? Yeah, but what if that? Well, I know, but what if this? And what if that? And what if this? And what if that? And we get ourselves worked up with all kinds of bad fear, most of which never happens in the at all, right? Have you ever spent time worrying, energy and effort worrying about something that never happened? Or something that you didn't have any control over, whether it was going to happen or not, and yet we expend all kinds of emotional energy and time and effort worrying about things that we either won't happen or we have no control over anyway. Bad fear allows people to manipulate us to doing things that we wouldn't or shouldn't do. Bad fear can even be hazardous to our health. You've heard the phrase, worried sick right? That's reality. Medically speaking, if we're always worried and anxious, it can lower our immune system, cause all kinds of bad things to happen. Fear, that kind of fear is is bad. It exaggerates, distorts, does all kinds of bad things. I want us to understand where that kind of fear comes from, all right? Jesus was very clear about it. He said this in John chapter 10, verse 10. He said, the thief comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I have come, Jesus said, that you might have life. Jesus was very clear that Satan, the enemy of our soul, the thief he calls him, is a liar first and foremost. And he plants these lies and exaggerations and anxieties into our brain to steal from us our life, to steal our joy, to steal our peace, to steal our hope, literally to steal our very lives. But Jesus came so that we might have life and not have to live in fear that way. And that's the good news. Because of Jesus, there is an antidote to fear. And if you're taking notes, that antidote to fear is simply faith. Now, if you grew up in church, you know that sounds like a good Sunday morning church answer. And you might know the um, definition of faith from Roman, or excuse me, uh, Hebrews chapter 11. that says, now, faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. Now, that's a good definition. I mean, it's in the Bible, you know, so that's good. But we're not going to look at that one. We're going to try to make it even simpler than that, okay? We want to take a step back and make an even simpler definition of faith that hopefully we can apply starting today, this morning, into our life to help eliminate fear and worry and anxiety. And it's also found in the Bible, so that's good. It's found in Genesis chapter 15, the story of Abraham. Now, Abraham, if you're not familiar, he was the guy that the Bible calls the father of the faithful. When it comes to people that had faith in the Bible, it lifts Abraham up as the guy to look to, right? God told him all kinds of crazy stuff that was going to happen in his life. And this is what uh, Genesis chapter 15, verse 6 says. It says simply, Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And so simply, faith is just believing God. That's what it means to have faith. It means to believe God. For Abraham, for us, Faith was and is primarily a trust relationship with God. It's taking him at his word. It's believing God. Uh, Andy Stanley furthers that. He kind of spreads that out a little bit. And he said, faith is believing God is who he said he is and that he would do what he said he would do. That's kind of the, the 
uh, definition I want us to kind of hang on and, and graft onto this morning. That faith is believing God is who he said he is and that he would do what he said he would do. That's what faith is. So think about the things that you're fearful about. The things that make you anxious. The things that make you uh, uneasy and afraid. How would applying that simple definition change things? What would that look like? How would, could that be the antidote to your fears and your worries? Simply believing God is who he is and that he would do what he said he would do. See, the truth is that God has spoken to all of our fears. He has. In the Bible, it, it talks about all kinds of different things that speaks to all the different fears and anxieties and worries that we have. And so, because of that, if you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus this morning, and you have fears and worries and anxieties, mostly they're for two reasons, right? One of two reasons, either ignorance um, or unbelief. Now, this might sound a little bit harsh, but let me explain what I mean. It may be ignorance because you just don't know what God has said. Think about the definition. If faith is believing God is who he said he is and that he'll do what he said he's do, some of us can't have faith because we don't know what he said. We don't know his word. We don't know what he has said. We don't know who he has said he is and what he has said he would do. So a lot of our fears have to do with ignorance. We just don't know what he has said. But if we're honest, some of our fears and some of our anxieties come because of just simple unbelief. We know what God has said, we just don't really believe it. We say, God, I know you said this, but I'm having a hard time with that. It's what Pastor Craig Rochelle calls practical atheism. It's people who say that they believe in God, but by the way we act, we don't live out the truth that we believe that God is who he said he is and that he would do what he said he would do. It, it, It plays out in things like this. I know, God, I know you said you'd always be with me, but I know, God, you said that you'd supply all my needs, but uh, I've still got these anxieties. God, I know you said that nothing would come my way that you and I together couldn't handle, but I'm still going to worry about this anyway. And that's how we pray, isn't it? I mean, often, if we're honest, we, we pray that way. We say, Lord, please be with me today. Friends, if you're a follower of Jesus, he's already promised to be with you every single day, every step of the way. And so think about how it would change our, our focus if we would pray this way. God, thank you that you have promised to be with me today. Isn't that a whole different prayer in the morning? God, thank you that you have promised to be with me. Thank you that you have promised that nothing's going to come today that you and I can't handle. Now, we can certainly pray that God would make his presence real to us, that we could experience, that we could understand it. Those are all valid, but we don't have to pray for his presence. He has already promised that. And over and over, so many things that we we pray about or that we're worried about or we're anxious for, God has already promised to us if we are his children, if we are his followers. And because of that, a lot of the things, if we live a life of fear and anxiety, it's not just troublesome. It's not just something that causes our life not to be as good as it might be. The Bible actually says if if you're a Christian, if you're a follower of Jesus, and you live a life of of constant anxiety and fear, that's actually sin, and it needs to be repented of. Because basically, we're telling God that he's a liar. If we don't believe that God is who he said he is, and that he'll do what he said he was do, we're basically saying that God, you're a liar. Um, Romans 14, 23 says that everything does not come from faith is sin. Because we're simply not believing God. We're saying, God, I know you said, but I don't believe. As I, I thought about this uh, th- this morning, you know, all, I think all of our fears and all of our anxieties can basically be summed up into three broad categories. And here comes some more profound stuff, right? So get ready to write notes, right? Here, I think all of our fears, everything that we have can be summed up into three primary categories. The past, the present, and the future. I saw some of you were writing that down. That's good stuff right there, all right? But let me explain what I mean. We're fearful of the past, right? Most of us have something in the past that we want to stay in the past, but we're fearful that it's not going to. We've done it, whatever it is. And trust me when I tell you, we've all done it, all right? We feel like we may have got by with it, but we're always worried that someone's going to find out about it. We think if people find out about it, they won't love us. They won't accept us. We think that even if God would find out, that's why we have to be closed closed with him, because if God would find out, he couldn't possibly love us. Nobody could love us. We're fearful of our past. 
We're fearful of our present, right? We're, we're fearful that we can't get through whatever storm that is on top of us right now. Family situation, financial situation, job situation, health situation, whatever storm you're in, we're fearful of today that I can't handle what's going to happen today. And we're also fearful about the, the future, right? Don't even get started about that. That's unknown. That's scary, right? We don't know what's out there. Especially if you look all the way out to the end of life and to death, that's just scary. We're, we're fearful about the past. We're fearful about our present. We're fearful about what's coming in the future. The good news is God has spoken to each of those, right? If we would believe God is who he said he is and that he will do what he said he would do, he has spoken to those. Take a look in your Bible, if you've got your Bible, to Isaiah chapter 43. It's on page 704 if you uh, don't bring your Bible and there's one in the chair in front of you, or it'll be up on the screen that you can follow along. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 3. Listen to these words. But now, this is what the Lord says. This is God speaking. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel. Here's what he says. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. <clears throat> when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One, of Israel, your Savior. I think in these three verses, God addresses each of our three broad categories of our fears. Think about it. What, what does he say about our past? Take a look. He says, fear not, for I have, what's the word? Redeemed you. God says, regarding our past, all that stuff in the past, if we are a follower, if we've already brought it to God, if we've already confessed it to him, he has redeemed it. What does that mean, he's redeemed it? What does it mean to redeem something? Well, I looked it up in the dictionary, all right? Mr. Webster says that to redeem is to free from what distresses or harms, to extricate from or to help overcome something detrimental, to change for the better, to repair or restore, to free from the consequences of sin, to make good. Did you get all that? That's what God says he's done with all of our stuff in the past. If we have confessed it to him, if we have brought it to him, if we are a follower of him, he has taken care of it. He has made it good. He's taken all that and redeemed it. That's what he says about our past. What about our present? Well, take a look again. He says, when you walk through the waters, what's those next five words? I will be with you. God promises that no matter what storm you are facing in the present, it makes no difference. He has promised that nothing will overcome us, that nothing that will be too big that he and we together can't handle. He will walk with us every step of the way. So God says, past, I got that covered. You're redeemed. Present, I'm sustaining you. I'm walking with you every step of the way. What about our future? Take a look at how he ends this, this little short passage. He says, For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One, your Savior. He says, Don't worry about the end. I've got that covered too. I am your Savior. You've got eternity in heaven that is promised to you. We, we get worried about the future. And I love the song from years ago. It said, I may not know who, what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And that's God's promise. He's like, I've got you covered in the past. I, I've redeemed that. Or I've made it possible for that to be redeemed if you would accept me. I will walk with you every step of the way. And in the future, there's nothing to be afraid of. I'll be there waiting for you. And I've already saved you. you your future is secure. In the past, he's our redeemer. In the present, he's our sustainer. In the future, he's our savior. That is what God has promised to us. This morning, as we try to grasp what it means to believe God is who he said he is and that he would do what he said he would do, if you've got concerns and worries and fears and anxieties, I just want to speak some truth into your life this morning. I want to let God's word speak some truth into your life. I'm going to go through several the verses of Scripture. Don't try to follow along. They'll be up on the screen. But if, if you're struggling, if you're fearful, anxious about something, you may just want to just close your eyes and listen to what God is saying to you this morning. He says this, I will never leave you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, I, we will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the sea. How about this one for good news? He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our sins. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we're just dust. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can man do to me? Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear. I will help you. Jesus said these words, Therefore, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or your body, what you'll wear. Is life not more important than food? Your body more uh, important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They don't sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow? They don't labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed as fine as they. If this is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire. How much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? So don't worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. Again, Jesus said, don't be afraid. I'm the first and the last. I'm the living one. I was dead, and behold, I'm alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys of death. He said, you don't have to be afraid of death. I got that covered. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to take you to be with me so that you can be where I am. My peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. I don't give you like the world gives. Don't let your hearts be troubled and don't be afraid. And finally this morning, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, that's the byproduct of faith. That's the byproduct of a life that's lived believing that God is who he is, that he said he, that he would do what he said he would do. It's peace. It's peace. Now think about that. What would it be like if you and me and we all lived lives that were characterized not by fear, not by anxiety, but by peace? In this uncertain, crazy world, I can't think of any other way that would, would make us stand out, that would point to God in our lives, that if we, as God's people, would live lives of peace, simply because we believe that God is who he said he is, and that he would do what he said he would do. I remember back when I was probably 10 or 11, I was just learning about the Cold War and the Soviet Union and nuclear bombs and all that stuff. And I had this fear, very real fear, that I was going to be outside my backyard playing one day and I was going to look toward town and I was going to see this big mushroom cloud and the world was going to be over. Now, I didn't think about why in the world anybody would want to bomb the town of Scottsburg, Indiana, right? But who says our fears have to be rational, right? You have fears that might not be rational. It was a very real fear of mine. I shared my fear with my mom and I told her about it. And she spoke truth into my life, truth that I remember to this day. And she said, she reminded me that the Bible says that God created this world and that he was going to decide when and how it was going to end. And so, could the world end in a nuclear war? Sure, but only if that's the way God had designed for it to be from the beginning. I just want to tell you, for a 10-year-old boy, there was something reassuring about knowing there was nothing going to happen that God didn't already know about, that God hadn't already spoken to. 
if we just believe that God is who he is and would do what he said he would do. Here's my assignment to you. I don't know what storm you're going through. I don't know what is causing you anxiety right now. But I challenge you to find out what God has said about it. Who is God in your situation? What, is this, what would that definition of faith mean in your situation? You don't know what God says? Ask somebody. Ask your mom. Ask my mom. Ask me. Seek it out because God has spoken to our fears. And he doesn't want us to live that way. Listen again to the words of God in Isaiah chapter 43. But now this is what the Lord says. He who created you, he who formed you, fear not. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they won't sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you won't be burned. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One, your Savior. That's the truth that God wants to speak into your life this morning. Remember one afternoon several years ago, a big storm came up. Sky got black, thunder, lightning, big wind, sirens went off. Now, in the, that time I was at a church in Shelbyville. My office was in the inner office. I didn't have any windows, so I didn't know what was going on. But I walked down to the hallway, and I saw what was going on. And I walked past our children's minister's office, and I heard him. He was on the phone with his wife, who was a teacher at the elementary school where our kids went. And she was telling him that the school had held the buses and they weren't letting kids get on the buses. They were just holding them in the school till the storm went past. Well, I knew that both of my kids uh, had after school activities that day, so they weren't supposed to be on the bus anyway. But I also knew that things weren't all well. You see, my kids at that age had a fear of storms. Now, there's such a thing as a healthy fear of storms, right? It's what tells us to get off the golf course when there's lightning around. Okay, that's a healthy fear. But the fear that my kids had at that age of storms went beyond that, all right? I think it heads over to the bad fear category, and you can blame their mother for that, all right? <laughs> but they were fearful, and I knew they would be fearful. So I had Phil, I said, would you ask Marcia to go and find my kids? Tell them that their daddy knows what's going on and things are going to be okay. And so Marcia went and found Chase, and this is what he said. He said, thanks for coming to talk to me because I wasn't done with my afraidness yet. Oh. <laughs> but here's the thing. I don't know what, fear, what storms you're going through right now, but here's what I do know. You have a heavenly Father who is sending you a message that says, I know exactly your situation. Your daddy knows about it. And I'm, it's going to be okay. I will walk with you every step of the way. And he asked the same question. Are you done with your afraidness yet? Will you just trust him? Will you believe that God is who he is? And it'll do what he said he would do. All those promises that we talked about this morning. If you're a follower of Jesus, they are yours. They are true. If you are not a follower of Jesus this morning, they can be true for you even today. If you'll accept him. As your Lord, would you pray with me? God, thank you so much for calming our fears. God, we live in a scary, fearful world. But God, you have spoken to our fears. You have promised that you will walk with us every step of the way. That you have redeemed our past and taken care of all that. You will sustain us through no matter what we go through today. And that you have saved us no matter what comes in the future. God, I pray that you would give us the, the wisdom to believe you. The courage to accept that you are who you say you are. And that you will do what you say you will do. Thank you for that promise through your son. And it's his name we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for taking the time to check out our website and watch the message today. Um, it's my hope and prayer that today's message will in have encouraged you and challenged you as you try to take your next steps toward God. If you have questions about today's message or would just like to talk to someone about what it means to take your next steps toward God, I'd be happy to talk with you. You can reach me at uh, the email address or the phone number on your screen. Otherwise, thanks for watching and may God richly bless you.